New to After Effects CS5 is a set of plugins that require a 64-bit operating system to function. One of them is what we're going to talk about next. It's under the Effect menu, and you see it right here, DigiFX Freeform. Now, what this allows you to do is to distort a mesh so that you can have it look nearer or further in different parts of the image, as well as to also use a grayscale image to displace or push the actual image in different regions. We'll talk about that in a little while. So if you don't see this option here, make sure that your computer supports 64-bit computing. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'd like you guys to go to your work files folder and open the flag SM, which stands for small, dot tiff. And what we're going to do with this guy is we're going to apply that effect. So I'm going to click on the flag. I'll go to Effect, DigiFX Freeform, and I'll go ahead and enable it. Now, this is an interesting little fact about this effect. It's a 3D effect that works in 2D space. So typically when we do 3D things in After Effects, we have to go down here in a timeline and make sure this little cube here is enabled on a layer like so. But we don't want to do that with this effect. This plugin uses a light and a camera and gives you that same feel. So with the plugin on our object, we see that we have this mesh here. This mesh gives us these control points that we can click and move like we can inside of Illustrator, Photoshop, or anything that has these points. As a matter of fact, they're almost like the puppet points in the puppet tool. What we're going to do now is we're going to talk about some of the controls that we're going to use. Then we'll talk about adding a light, a camera, and then adding a displacement map to this guy. All right, let's take a look over here at the plugin itself. You see that we have the grid. I'll twirl this open, and the grid is this little region here that has these four boxes. So we have two rows and two columns currently. Two rows and two columns. We can go ahead and increase or decrease this by using the slider or the hot text. Notice as, as I slide this to eight, we have now eight rows, and I can also make this eight columns. Now you might be wondering, why do that? Well, the more of these you have, the better the deformation is going to be. But also, you're also going to have more of a hit on your processor. So you really need to have a pretty high-end computer to really get the most of this effect. So I'm going to drop this back down to about 6 and 6. I'll twirl those guys open, or rather closed. We also have the editing controls. Whenever we manipulate these guys here, we can determine which way we can move these points. For example, you see this point here? Well, I can currently move it in X, Y, and Z. But if I only want to move it up and down, for example, I can go to Manipulation and choose Y only. And now, I can't move it left or right, only on the Y axis, which is up or down. Likewise, if I want to go near and far, I turn Z on, or X for left and right only. And now I can't go up and down. I'll put this back on X, Y, and Z. I can also go to my 3D mesh controls, and I can move these mesh points by moving them manually. Or I can, of course, use some of these guys as well. So I'm pretty much moving the entire thing. Let me undo that. I also have some surface controls that give me the ability to change the lighting and the specular and the roughness of that lighting. So I can get a very shiny effect, rough it up a little bit by, by diluting some of that power, and I can change the brightness on the object itself. We also have backside controls. In other words, if we were to spin this guy around, what would we see behind it? So we can say to show a certain layer, or we can have it shaded or mirror. As far as the 3D mesh quality, this is important too when you're finally rendering and you're ready to make a movie. Currently, the subdivision of this mesh is going to be 30, but to get a really nice quality render, you want to bump it up to about 80 to 100. We also have our rendering. Currently, we have full. We can choose wireframe, 
which will give us a speedier workflow so we don't have to be slowed down by the image. Shade, which will get rid of the colors but give us a shade to look at. And of course, full. Now, in conjunction with the subdivision here, we have anti-aliasing, which means the jaggies. You know, those little stair-stepping effects that we see. So we can turn the anti-aliasing onto low or higher. And as you can see here, right away in the stars, as a matter of fact, let me zoom in a little bit for you guys. You'll notice that when I turn it off, look at the difference here. Just pay attention right there. See the little jaggedy there? And I'll put that back on to a little higher, like medium. And it gets even smoother. So that is how we can use those controls. We also have multi-processing, which means, of course, uh, if you have a multi-processor computer, you can go ahead and enable that, and you get a better effect. And, of course, it'll work a little faster. Now we also have displacement controls, which we'll talk about when we get to the displacement section of this particular section. So let's go ahead now and talk about how to actually manipulate these points to make this flag look like it's a little uh, buckling in the wind.